Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay, good morning, Periscope. Good morning on Facebook. Good morning, my group, the Winner Circle group. So I'm going to be semi-quick today. But I want to talk about um, this event I had the opportunity to attend yesterday. And it was very informative. And it um, allowed me to learn about some of the things that's going on within the city. So I can definitely keep you guys aware what's going on as it relates to the economy, as it relates to just things that we need to be informed about. But you guys have to take into consideration. It's not mine. It's not mine. Sorry. Um, so you guys have to take into consideration what's um, what's going on. So let me inform you. What's, what what Okay, what happened? First of all, who those that don't know me on Periscope, who those that may not know me on pay, on Facebook, um, my name is Delia and I'm the owner of DNT Investment Consultant LLC. I do teach people how to invest in the stock market, but that's not what I'm here today for. I'm here today to tell you about exactly what I said about stingrays, about regentrification, and about the $50 million that's allotted in this city, which is a great city that I live in, the city of Charlotte, and what's going on <laughs> so you guys can know what is taking place. So first of all, I had the ability to be in the room. <laughs> I had the ability to be in the room of what's going on in the city of Charlotte. So <clears throat> what I did, of course, um, I was there for the information, there to learn, there to just pretty much just learn the ins and outs of what, what was taking place. Well, first of all, what's taking place is um, the city of Charlotte has a $50 million grant. So they got the $50 million grant that's, um, that's a lot allotted so now since they have the 50 million dollar grant they are using that money for the republican national convention okay so even though they're using that money for the republican national conventions they are not telling the people which is us <laughs> what they're doing with that money 50 million dollars now i when i was in the room i heard of some Community organizations, some minority organizations that can't even get five hundred dollars for restorative justice, for classes, for you name it. Some of these community organizations couldn't even get five hundred dollars. <laughs> some of these companies can't even get grant money. But you got this particular allotment set aside for the city of Charlotte, fifty million dollars, and they are not um, receiving. They're not. The council don't have to approve how they're about to spend this money. So I'm just trying to figure out how in the world this actually takes place. The, anytime it's over $100,000, it, it has to be approved. But it's not even being approved for. So they are able to spend this money how they choose to see fit. So in 2020, the Republican National Convention will be hosting, will be host in the city of Charlotte. <laughs> so I said, wow, that's going to be interesting. If you guys don't know, back a few years back, it was an unarmed black man that was killed in the city of Char Charlotte that created a um, protest, which is a national protest. And since that um, had occurred, that they received some type of... Um, training and some other things that they were supposed to have been doing in the city of Charlotte. But there still have been a lot of mistrust and mis things that's going on in regards to the police in the community because I don't know if it made national news, but it was another unarmed black person that was killed in the city of Charlotte this year. So I'm just like, okay, so what exactly is taking place? So you have these monies that's allotted, $50 million, and there is no accountability for that money. And you have organizations, community, small business leaders, and things that's trying to bridge the gap with um, trying to fight against crime and poverty. Because, you know, there's like a two-hand thing. Crime and poverty is like two hand. But if you got community leaders and things of that nature that is trying to be on the forefront, have boots on the ground, trying to trying to connect the people with resources to help them to better their self, you 
the people are not the communities are not connecting the two. They're not they're not connecting the two, and they're making it very hard for organizations, for nonprofit organizations, as well as small businesses to receive some of these monies. I've been in a room as a small minority black business owner, and they saying, okay, in order for you to be a prime contractor on this um, contract, you have to have so many. The bar is all the way up to the sky. Let me tell you, the bar is up to the sky and is making it kind of difficult for a lot of, it's making it difficult for a lot of small black business owners to be prom contractors to receive these grant monies that's already available for us. So we have to be subcontracted, and when we subcontract, we only can get a portion of the money, which is only like 10%, and then the cycle repeats. They keep 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 getting the same contractors over and over again. I'm telling you, you guys, this thing is so much bigger <laughs> than what I thought it was. This is like a a norm this is it is a mountain it, it it really is it kind of baffles me to be in a room to see all the things that's that's taking place okay so another thing that i learned with being in a room yesterday was charlotte is number three one two three when it comes to regentrification one two three the first one that's on the list of regentrification list is detroit the second um, city that's on the regentrification list is Little Haiti in Miami. The third one is Charlotte, the Lockwood neighborhood. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, familiar with Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte has a lot of stuff going on. As a matter of fact, um, Charlotte was ranked um, 50 in regards to economic mobility and to create affordable housing, to create job housings and stuff like that. So with Charlotte being number three on the list, you already know what's, what's going on in terms of regentrification in the city of Charlotte. People are moving by the masses. I wanted to literally jump up and scream <laughs> last night. I really wanted to because, you know, I've learned of neighborhoods that's um, on an aggressive regentrification list and what they're and what they're doing with with um with the neighborhoods that's that's on an aggressive regentrification list is these people don't know what's taking place in their communities. It's not really a lot of advocates with boots on the ground that would tell these people, okay, these big developers that's coming from another town <laughs> they're coming and they're buying up the property they're, uh, they're 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 creating when they buy up the property they're causing the the housing value to go up now i learned in um the lockwood neighborhood the, the property of the houses is going for three hundred thousand now so they have all these funds that's allocated. They have, let me tell you, stuff to, to put the housings up to cold. They have um people that um that can help them with now they have all type of stuff that's available for these people to understand. But let me tell you what's going on. It really irked my nerves when I learned this. They don't know the programs are available for them. So you got these big developers that's coming in and regentrifying re the area quickly. You can't really stop them. But on another end, they have silent programs that's available. That I'm not I'm saying I'm not saying they silent. I'm not saying no that people don't know about them. Some people may know about them, but you have older people that houses that has been passed on for generation to generation to generation, and they're losing their homes because of tax taxes going up. They're losing their homes because they can't keep up with they have four or five code inspectors coming on. Let me tell you about the code inspector. They're forceful. I know that because they come to my mom's house. They're very forceful forceful with their stuff they will come and they will harass until your house is up to code if it don't meet the code the city have your house regentrification is real i'm telling you regentrification is really real in what's going on how in the world is the city of charlotte was 11th in the most crime written areas in the country but now the city of charlotte is one of the one of the three 
<laughs> three that's on the top. They're one of three that's on the top for regentification. Like I told you, Detroit was one. Little Haiti is two, and Charlotte is number three. I live in Charlotte. I was in the room yesterday, and it really, it really did something to me. If I could have jumped up and yelled and screamed, I probably would have. Okay, so what's taking place when the regentification um, process starts? What's taking place is a shift in the demographics. You know that's what's taking place. I go into one neighborhood, and when I cut through that neighborhood to get to the barbershop, I love my barber. Shout out to my barber if you watch this uh, Periscope. I mean, if you watch the Facebook. He's on my Facebook friend list. Um, so I go, into the, I go through a neighborhood, um, and I see... A big, beautiful home, a small home, a two or three big, beautiful homes, another small home. They're bulldozing these homes down to the ground. They're putting these big $300,000 homes. These people with HOVs, people are losing their houses. Black businesses are being closed because of regentifications. I read, I read reports, they were slipping letters under people's doors. Literally letting them know, hey, this big developer have bought your your um, residential, your your commercial, I'm not residential, your commercial building. You have to move. And what's being what's happening is how in the world a place that was was classified stigma as the most crime ridden area, one of the top in the top 15 as a crime ridden area. How in the world there was most I mean in dangerous in the country and now they're the most their economic development areas now black businesses are moving by the masses they're increasing their their rent they can't afford to stay there so they're closing the 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 businesses and they're moving franchise big organ big companies in it's happening right before your eyes. It's a shift in the d dynamics. And also the large change, the large chain, um, built, um, like you may see, you know, the big chain stores or the big chain restaurants or things of that nature is coming in. It really bothered me. It really did yesterday. I was just trying to really hold my peace. So... When I learned that the city of Charlotte um, had fifty million dollars, excuse me, of grant money, and they're able to spend this money without the approval of the city council people, how is that even possible? So you're not even going to let the people know what you're spending that money on. On top of smaller organizations that's trying to bridge the gap, like small businesses, that's one that's being moved out of their communities because of regentification, two, that's only um, not getting accessible to certain grant monies. I heard as little as $500, but you got $50 million. <laughs> I said, what? So you mean to tell me this black organization, this black company that's only that's, that's providing these services for the community only got a grant for 500, some a thousand, some even more, some even more. I'm not saying that nobody don't receive anything, but let me tell you what I do know. I've been in the room on numerous occasions. I've been in the room when trying to uh, trying to be a prom, prom contractor and some of these some of these things you cannot they they raise the bar so high that a lot of minority businesses is only less than ten percent that be prom contractors so you got over close to a billion dollars how in the world only ten percent and it's over close to a billion dollars and only ten percent of the people that's minorities are receiving these grants. How is it even possible? It's so much money. <laughs> and we can't even be a prime contractor. Even, even if we can be a prime contractor, we can kind of work with the community and help them and with employment and some of the things like that. I've been in the room. I'm telling you. I was in a room last year. I was in a room last night. 
also what's taking place in the city is they, they, they're about to bring the stingrays. And stingrays, they allow those to, to track your, 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 your phone while you're talking on the phone. <laughs> Let's just keep it simple. So, you have a stingray that's about to be implemented. And so, and, and I don't know the radius that's, that's allotted catered for, and I don't know where they're going to put them, but it's happening. It's happening. It's happening right up under our noses. It's happening. And basically, if you are innocent bystander, your, your conversation is going to be recorded. I mean, come on. That's like the big brother is watching you. That's like the big brother is watching you. So, stingrays are being in implemented. Stingrays are used as a surveillance technique to record conversations, cell phones, convocations. So, they building these, they um, ha having these things allotted on the cell towers. And with that being played, and that being said, they're able to record quote unquote conversations. So, if you are an innocent bystander, or if you're not an innocent bystander, you can definitely um, be um, recorded. <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand. But, this is what you guys have to know. In order for some progress to be made, we as people have to do our part, our part, because it was some people that wasn't in the room that voted for some of these policies. Voted. Do you know that some programs that will, that can kind of bridge the gap to reduce some of these things, so to reduce some of the crime ridding, some of the poverty, some of the some of the things that's taking place. They, they was rejected. <laughs> they rejected the programs. How? How are you rejecting the very thing that can be used to bridge the gap? How? How is that even possible? I, I don't understand. So you guys have to know what you know. And no, regentification is real. This grant money is real. They're moving people out. People are losing their homes. They need advocates in the community that will educate the people. They need program and policies that's in place. They need people that will tell the people what's going on because people don't know and it's happening like this. I'm telling you. I don't know what my face was looking like yesterday, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I, I don't know. I don't know if I was smiling. I was asking a question about redlining. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with redlining. This policy, <laughs> when they was talking about, okay, we're going to ask. We're going to try to assist some people with the regentification and educate the people but I'm just like, how so? And how are you going to get some loans to the people when banks won't even help the people because of redlining? How? <laughs> how? Those policies that's been in place to disfranchise our people for a long time. I'm not no pro-black person. I'm pro the right thing. We're not going to get it twisted. I always been an advocate of doing the right thing. I always been outspoken. But I'm just like, what in the world is going on? So you saying that you have these programs and you help these people and you have, what about, okay, you're trying to have the banks, I have monies set aside to help people, but because of redlining, that was specifically set aside to disfranchise certain races. They won't even get approved. I mean, this thing is deep.
is so much bigger than what you see on the eye. It's so much bigger than what you think you know because it's not really that. Some people that wasn't in the room, that should have been in the room, that's not approving programs that will bridge the gap. They're rejecting these programs. How you are how are you rejecting the very thing that can help people? But you are proving some absurd amount of money for stuff that makes no sense. I don't understand. Like even in the city of Fayetteville when they had certain money set aside for certain programs, but they want to um make um the military um arts the military museum better. I'm like, what? That museum is beautiful. I love the military. For those who don't know, I worked on several military bases. I love the military. I have family that was in the military. So that's not that's not where I'm saying. I'm saying that it's money that's set aside that's just being allocated the wrong way is not being allocated to bridge the gap to help people that definitely need. They need boots on the ground. They need people that will tell the public what's going on. You guys have to be in the room, I'm telling you, because it will definitely open your eyes to a lot of things that's taking place that you may not know. I mean, I knew about regentrification. I just didn't know how serious it was in the city of Charlotte. I knew about redlining. Um, I knew about the policies that were set in place to disfranchise certain um, races. I knew about all those things. Um, however, I didn't know that the $50 million grant money that was set aside, I did not know about programs that was that was brought to the forefront, forefront for, for <laughs> the council to approve that was being rejected. That could be the very program that could be in place to help crime and poverty is like a sister, <laughs> cousin, whatever. So if you having programs that can bridge that gap, why reject them without without even trying? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but that's all I wanted to say. I didn't want to talk about stocks on today. I just want to let you guys know. I was definitely in the room yesterday and I wasn't pleased. I wasn't. And I'm going to keep you aware because I got um, invited to do some other things. So, um, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know. <laughs> and you guys, um, y'all have a great day. Be in the room. I'm telling you. Be in the room. I mean, I, it, it doesn't matter if you got a little piece. If you're, if you're doing something small as far as just educating senior citizens on programs that can be available to... Um, to upkeep their houses. And it, it, it can be as simple as giving them a piece of paper. <laughs> it can be simple. Hey, these are the programs that's available um, to keep your house up to code. Because I'm telling you, those code enforcers are forceful. If I, me, Delia, <laughs> you, you know I'm a little spicy. <laughs> I never was there when the code enforcer came to my mom's house but if i had been <laughs> i'm telling you we would have had a, we would have had a conversation because no we're not we're you're not gonna try to just take something off under somebody's feet you're just not gonna do that without educating them and having them with the proper tools in place that can help them you have all these big developers from out of from overseas as well as in the states that's coming in your city and doing a new thing. They're doing a new thing, getting changing the dif demographics because you guys have to understand. Once they start building appealing places to the eye. New businesses are going to come, and that's going to pretty much drive one community out and a new community in. It's happening. It's happening fast. 
you guys, we have we have to do something. Like I said, if, even if it's small, sharing the information with with seniors or sharing the information with with parents, um, families that's working class, middle class. I mean, how can you? You know, you have your home and in in hundred thousand. I mean, not hundred, but three hundred thousand dollar homes is going up in your neighborhood. You know your property value. Of what's is going to go up? Of course, your taxes. And we have to be aware of what's taking place because if we don't, we don't. If we don't be proactive, we have to face with the consequences um, later. So education is the key. Being a part of what's going on in the community is definitely a key because it will allow you to know what's taking place. And it will allow you to know how you can be effective, even if it's helping one person. It's better than helping zero. <laughs> so be a change agent. Be a change agent. I mean, change. Help somebody. Even if it's only your family, just help somebody. <laughs> I'm just telling you because it, it's awful. It's awful to see people losing their houses for just pennies. They're, for, they're forcing them out. They're slipping, slipping notes in small business owners' doors in commercial buildings, telling them basically this property has been purchased by X. Some developer, you have X amount of days to move. It's crazy. Not only the small business being placed, families being displaced, people are losing their houses. It's all different type of stuff. There, it's it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But we can we can do something. Putting the right people in place is definitely one thing we can do. You have to go vote. You have to be a part of what's going on in your community, so you will know. You just have to. So, that's my spiel for the day. I'm definitely about to do what I do best is read the St Wall Street Journal. <laughs> it's actually right here. Yep. The Wall Street Journal. So, you guys, I'm about to do some stock market stuff. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to tell you guys about that. And have a great day. And share this if you think someone will be interested in learning about, you know, what's going on. Regentification, grant money, all these things like that is available. But who is available to <laughs> is the question. <laughs>